So let's have uh, the AI not target only the first player, but actually target whoever they found. Okay. That's all that I mean. And let's see how we do this. I think the similar approach will be to just on start sample and find a controller. Yeah, let's go with that. So AI handler. Since uh, everyone is using the AI handler, let's delete these two. Don't use them. And uh, then. We just need to find an enemy. Okay, that's really easy. All we have to do is on start or let's do a handle FOV, I guess. So, first of all, we're going to do overlap circle. And from a transfer position, I think a radius, I'm just going to give it something high enough. And that should do it. And for layer mask, I think the head data layer, so it's six, I believe. If we check from the head box, yes. Uh, six should be enough. Okay, this is not really a stealth game. It's just to make it, it's just to get some, an enemy to target. Okay, then for its uh, collider, we find colliders. Then we need to check the head box. Now we know everything we go we get is a head box because we are looking only at the head box layer. So we just can check right on the unit controller and do get component in parent unit controller and if unit controller let's do a check just a second check so if you uh, the team is not the same as my controller, my owner. So we'll call that my unit controller. So team, then that means uh, it's an enemy. Now I'm just going to list all the units, all the unit controllers we find, so we can filter them based on the distance. Okay. So we have all of them, then all we have to do is do four integer uh, float max distance, first of all. And float dot max. Okay, then vector or float temporary distance, vector two dot distance. targets dot count uh, targets a dot position with our own transfer dot position if distance is lower than the maximum distance then distance will uh, then max distance will be max distance will be distance then let's do an integer target index let's start with zero Now, at most, this will do like four iterations, so it doesn't matter, to be honest. So, enemy equals target index, uh, target, target index, or targets, I guess. Okay, so throw that in the start. And, yeah. That will do it. Oh, let's just do it after our phase here. Now, we could do 
if you are hitting uh, the if somebody is hitting you on the unit controller that has to go however uh, if somebody is hitting you you can prioritize that target to yeah you could prioritize your target but let's see it in action first so this guy is going to be here this guy is going to be here so this guy is probably going to Donatello instead of this guy okay we have an uh, error and the error is we actually do this on start and they haven't set up the layers yet okay that's not the error then Why? Okay. Like, I don't know why this. Oh, because it's missing the post process. Okay. We have to clear that. We have to regenerate the project actually. Then let's do uh, this. Then this guy. So targets. There's no targets. Okay. And I think the the layer mask could be wrong. Or most likely it is wrong. So let's assign. Well, you know what? There's no real need to do an overlap cycle. Because we could just be looking at our players right away. Mm. So let's give you this a thought. Uh, or lab cycle all I don't yeah I don't get why this doesn't return uh, unless there's nothing but let's just check on all layers and then this will probably return something yeah that works as well it's just looking on all colliders so it doesn't matter okay the mirror you see it's kind of silly so let's fix the silly mirror i guess let's stay on the edge oh you know maybe it's the edge actually or is it the attack of time Attack over time, let's check it. Yeah, I guess the attack over time sets this up. Let's make this like three, or maybe two. And then stay on the edge. What does it do? It just stays one point from yeah okay target offset so definition it stays there but it doesn't uh, for some reason it doesn't go on the person y and position target. Plus the offset. Just as that. Okay. Well, I actually don't know. Let's maybe make it point three. Just to see. 
Ia, și pe gheschi de nu mă duc ăla. I get it. Get the target position from player. And then your target position on red target is not doing anything. Get position close to this. Hmm. Let's debug this. We don't want this anymore. We fix that. So you have your target position, which is this. You're going to say, okay. Then you have the enemy's target position, which is ours. And then the target position, we will add an offset. And then you should be targeting that position. Stepping out of that, we're just saying move to position, which is minus 1.3. And X. That's it. Uh, that's definitely not the position you want, but I think, yeah, I think I know what it is. We also have it on the agent, stopping distance to B. Let's make this zero. And let's check hit him up. Let's check the air handler as well. But update, we're not doing anything. Any checks over here, I guess. Yeah, we don't. And we are, in terms of Pathfinder, I think we're good. I, maybe it's the agent actually, maybe yeah. So let's go on our Pathfinder, on the, we said it's on the walkable area. And let's change the offset to zero one. Because it was right on the edge, So oh, I don't know if that was the case, but it seems, yeah, it seems it was. He can target us. Okay, that's good then. That's good enough. So switching this back to zero should so make him stay exactly where we are. Of course, he's attacking over time. But yeah, okay, that's fine, Max. I'm kind of, I can go below for some reason. But I can live with it, doesn't matter. Okay, yeah, so basically, I'll just. Yeah, I think that's it, actually. This is fine. Oh, well, it is. Okay, so let's try. Not from player, but from the from the camera. And let's try not looking at the player. And staying 300 pixels from the center of the camera. That's probably way too low. Two, okay. Two is fine, I guess.
and maybe one maybe one is too much going to yeah so we can use these tools to basically set up the ai so let's see it so i leave this guy as this stay on the edge stay on the edge uh two and so this guy will go to point four and minus two and this guy will be will basically just be this so i'm copying this guy and i'm going to say mirror player throw i copy this as well and instead of stay on the edge i'll use this stay on the edge and do mirror player okay and let's put these two guys on phase two okay let's open up however the phase two so we see what's actually going to happen let's close phase one just so that we're not confusing ourselves so this guy is going to be throwing rocks from uh, right side this guy is going to be throwing rocks from left side okay we probably need to rotate this guy like so and we can name them rock thrower rock thrower okay let's give these two guys their own colors so instead of blue on the shirt let's do to, 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 let's do green or maybe this one i don't know let's use that i don't know what this is but let's change it as well okay so let's close phase two let's enable phase one mm, phase two okay okay so I'm actually going to close the other guy because I want to see the logics. Let's kill them. Awesome. Yeah, that's actually work. That actually works. But they are staying there. Or what are they doing? Are they staying too far. I think they're staying too far off the sides. So let's say scan the edge. Okay, why is that? Because you are waiting on the camera transform, the camera target, which is here. You will not understand why this is different now, though. It's all they have been, but let's see. What's phase one? to phase two rock thrower oh. okay and one should have been something like this but you they were, aren't working or something so now if this were actually enabled we could just use the yeah so if this i think we can uh, enable it actually so let's just keep this on one and then i'm going to split my 
units this director uh, I'm going to split the th rock throwers so when phase two ends they're actually going to be inside and we will be able to move as well just for fun okay so let's unparent this and before phase three the phase two on phase n is going to enable rock throwers just to see them move as well Let's see. I think I'll make the yellow ones do okay, so this needs to stop. We need to be they need to actually play their animation, but I think we you get the idea they will try and keep on the on the edge of this. So awesome. We are on to something. And let's see, get close to player, move to position. Uh, so let's just get to target position then. It's the same, but why are they not playing it then? Or maybe it's the attack over time. So you kind of see where using all of this kind of makes for a poopy logic. Unless it's actually the animation. No, the animation goes back to throw. Okay. So let's just see where they are playing their animation then. Okay, is it directing? Is root motion dead? You go to the kind of logic is not now. Tick. Don't look at player. Aha, uh -huh, that's where, where the problem is. We need to be ticking the animator. Public bulk animator if or don't take animator okay let's say one thing so let's test this out. I think that should do it. We probably need to fix the speeds and all that. Awesome. That works. Let's kill these guys. Yeah, that works. Oh, that works really nice. We just need to fix the speed, but it will work fine. Yeah, that's actually that's actually lovely. So another thing we can do is uh, I'm just going to do this on the sub logic. And I will say on result. So once you are here, we could do public bull switch direction or public bull 
Switch direction horizontal actually. Horizontal or switch direction vertical. So uh, okay, let's give it some wait time for wait time and some internal wait time. So if wait time is less it's higher than or actually if wait time is higher than wait time then return and wait time minus delta then on reads if actually I don't really need to know if we reach or not just on reads target maybe the target is not done so if switch direction horizontal switch direction and our target offset dot x will be the opposite of our target offset dot x and if switch direction vertical our target offset dot y will be minus target offset dot y okay then in both of these cases we do want to add on our wait time so we have wait time so let's test this out but one more thing we have to do because now we have an internal wait time in our sub logic then we have to tick instance the sub logics okay so for both of these guys i'm just going to do vertical and have them change every two seconds now because i'm a bit lazy i'm just going to do the rock throwers enable them let's see what they are going to do and you'll see that they are working so every two seconds they will be changing directions they're doing it from the camera keep that in mind so independent of where i am they will just try and follow the camera but yeah that's actually a nice logic we could yeah could work for us let's see can i hit him yeah that's really easy, even harder to do now that it should be able to, to do it or well i guess that worked as well okay so one last thing i'm going to do is i'm actually going to have the rock throwers spawn the projectile via the object puller and not from uh, from the resources so let's put this prefab in here and on our object puller i'll, I'll do a rock and then projectile one uh, i think it's fine if we get kept this at okay i'll do 50 just for fun just so that we have all of them in there which is really cool and we have it as an event which means we probably have it on the animator hook we have a spawn projectile spawn object spawn object so instead of going through resource load we'll do actually don't even have to instance it we'll just do object puller get object id and only thing that we also have to do is set active to true okay for now i'm going to make the the rocks to have a budget of one so we'll see it's going to vanish and then he will be throwing it again actually i'll make it to two because we have two of them yeah 
no idea we forgot to set up the projector just make it projector one for now And that's uh, the rock throwers, yeah, forgot them. Okay, so he throws one. When they try to throw another one. Okay, now you see we have one small problem. It's because we're not resetting the projectile. So, let's see our logic here. Invoke on end. Yeah, basically. Because we are closing the projectile, uh, yeah, the, the, it will not work, damn it. So I'm going to leave the animator open. And instead of this, let us add a public bool move on a star, or just move, I guess. So if move, for this then void on enable move equals true and we'll do a method public void move status bool status move equals status okay then we'll just add the event projectile uh, move status set it to false you can also hook the animator in there and enable it and disable it but i don't think the performance will be that much greater but if you're having troubles you know do that as well okay and you see that this works fine and one small thing no actually no small things i think we are destroying this when we're hitting so we don't want to do this anymore we don't want to be destroying them on the projectile instead of destroy object just go to the first object and disable it that's it well, I think we're done for this part as well. So now we are, you can create phases with this. So on the next part, we'll do persistence, some persistences onto our levels. So you can change levels and then we are pretty much done. Awesome. So that's it for now. I'll see you on the next part. As always, you know what to do, like, subscribe, and of course continue supporting my patron so we can make all of this and even more stuff and even cooler stuff so i'll see you next time